In April of 2023, the first Patriot batteries arrived into Ukraine, donated by the United States and Germany. Subsequently, in early May, the Ukrainians announced that they shot down a Kinzhal air-launched ballistic missile using a Patriot SAM system. A few days later, Patrick Ryder, press secretary of the Department of Defense, confirmed the successful engagement. It is worth examining the question whether the Patriot is suitable for shooting down such a threat and debunk some myths regarding ballistic missiles. The Russian and the tabloid press frequently calls the Kinzhal an invincible weapon or any similar nonsense. Invincible weapons, invisible airplanes or insunk rebel ships do not exist. So, then what are the actual characteristics and capabilities of ballistic missile or air-launched ballistic missiles? As the name suggests, a ballistic missile travels on ballistic trajectory. This is similar to when a person throws an object. The hand swings, accelerates the object, then releases it at some point. Depending on the initial speed, direction, which is called a velocity vector, and air resistance, the object travels a certain distance with a given trajectory peak. A ballistic missile works similarly, but there are considerable differences in some features. Considering a ballistic missile with a range of hundreds or thousands of kilometers, the ratio between the length of the acceleration and the total trajectory is not necessarily similar to the object throwing example. Also, a ballistic missile is more controlled during the acceleration phase. Following the launch, the missile climbs vertically or almost vertically to leave behind the dense lower region of the atmosphere on the shortest possible route. Following the initial climbing phase, the missile decreases the angle of climb. As the missile gains speed and altitude, it follows a trajectory towards the burnout point. Following the engine burnout, the trajectory of the missile is defined by its inertia. Early ballistic missiles of the Cold War following the burnout could not perform any trajectory correction. Their accuracy, or rather their inaccuracy, corresponded to this limitation. Early short-range ballistic missiles with about 100 km range had about half a kilometer dispersion radius or even a bit larger. The intercontinental ballistic missiles, because of their longer flight time, could have even a 10-20 times larger, about 10 km large dispersion radius. The first ballistic missiles that could perform terminal phase trajectory correction and adjustments have appeared at the end of the 80s. Such a ballistic missile was the American Pershing II or the OTR-23 Oka with aerodynamic braking capability. The point of this feature was to make the interception harder for a surface-to-air missile system with anti-ballistic missile capability. It has to be underlined that ballistic missile does not maneuver like airplanes because thrust is not available to them. Every maneuver decreases the speed of the missile. The consequence of this that for terminal phase trajectory adjustment or braking, the missile has to be overshot the planned target. During the preparation phase of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, this caused some issues. The Soviets stated that the Air 400 missiles of the OTR 23 Oka had only 400 km range, while the United States stated it is a 500 km range system, because using aerodynamic braking is just an option. The range of a ballistic missile depends on the burnout speed and altitude. The maximum speed of a ballistic missile can be between Mach 3 and Mach 23. Considering land-based ballistic missiles only, the top speed and range categories are roughly the following. 100 km range tactical ballistic missile has about Mach 3 top speed. A 450 short range ballistic missile has about Mach 6 speed. A 750 km range has about Mach 8. An intermediate range ballistic missile with 5500 km range is about Mach 15. The speed of an intercontinental ballistic missile is between Mach 18 and 23. During the Cold War, lots of ballistic missiles had far higher top speed than Mach 5, while nobody ever labeled or hyped them as hypersonic missiles. One of the most defining factors of a target is its speed. The higher the speed of a target makes it more difficult to shoot it down. For the S-75 and Volkov, we could see the effect of the target speed on the engagement zone. It seriously reduced the size of the zone compared to subsonic targets, especially considering the flyby distance. This reduction in engagement zone compared to slower targets is true but also for the more advanced S-200 Vega with different guidance and faster missile. Only the proportion of the decrease is different. 
The proportion of the change is derived from the flight time of the surface to air missile, the time available from the target detection to heat, as well as the guidance method and some other factors. So, the question is basically the size of the engagement zone of a modern air defense system against a target with a given speed, which defines the extent of the area which can be protected. Against a high-speed flyby target, the range of any SAM system is considerably smaller compared to targets which fly towards to the SAM site or battery. The maneuvering capability of a ballistic missile is limited to terminal phase trajectory adjustment following the engine burnout. A ballistic missile cannot alter its course like an airplane would because of its extremely high speed. The terminal phase trajectory change only corresponds to a slight heading change and no serious correction to the glide path. Arriving from a different direction than the line between the launch and target is not possible. Due to the high speed, even a small change in heading is enough to significantly reduce the speed of a ballistic missile. The terminal phase maneuverability of modern ballistic missiles basically covers two things. First, today's advanced ballistic missiles can hit a large building thanks to the aid of satellite navigation. This kind of fine trajectory correction capability is essential to make a usable ballistic missile with a conventional warhead. The other type of terminal phase maneuverability existed even before the advent of satellite navigation aids. Some ballistic missiles had aerodynamic braking capability. The point of this feature was to change the impact point of the ballistic missile within certain limitation in the terminal phase. The altered impact point was able to make enemy interception impossible in some cases due to time running out before the interceptor missile could be caught up with. Course correction in terminal phase could also possibly force an already launched surface-to-air missile to miss its target as it was unable to perform the necessary trajectory changes before impact. This latter scenario was not guaranteed at all, as it was dependent on many factors. The location of the launch interceptor missile and the SAM battery, the speed and trajectory of the attacking ballistic missiles and so on. They are all needed to be within certain parameters for a successful interception. Therefore, just because a missile has the capability explained in the first point, the precision capability, it does not necessarily mean it could do the braking. It is another capability and is optional to use that. The terminal phase trajectory change cannot be used against a target at the edge of the range because ballistic missiles have to overshot the target in order to hit the intended target after the braking. In addition, a ballistic missile can perform this braking only in a pre-programmed way. A ballistic missile has no idea whether an interceptor missile has been launched at it or not. The idea that a ballistic missile is dodging interceptor missiles similarly as aircraft did with SAMs is pure nonsense. If the location of an anti-ballistic missile capable SAM site or battery is known for the attacker, that information can help to optimize the braking maneuver, but a ballistic missile does not have infinite flexibility. If there is no information about the location of the possible ABM capable SAM site, or the information is outdated, then the benefit of this maneuver can be even zero. One of the biggest misconceptions spread by the press and people inexperienced in the subject is the idea of a ballistic or hypersonic missile performing serious lateral maneuvers or zigzagging, making it difficult to shut down due to constantly changing target parameters. The biggest limitation in lateral maneuvering in relation to the target, if it would make sense at all, is huge energy requirement and creating the large lift force which is needed for that. Even if a ballistic missile flying with 8-10 times of the speed of sound would generate the force which is required for a 10G overload turn, its turning radius would be in an order of 60-90 km even if the missile could maintain the speed. However, in the terminal phase it would be a nice thing flying towards the target to perform the necessary fine adjustment in trajectory to hit it. However, it can be deducted from these distances and turning radius values that in terminal phase about 40-50 km from the target, the missile does not perform any lateral maneuvers and especially not with 10G. How can this be known? Well, a little spoiler comes here. Both the S-300 and the Patriot SAM systems use quasi-ballistic missiles. The speed and overload characteristics of the 5V55R missile of the S-300PS is publicly available. 
The missile in the Mach 4 5 speed region at 20 km altitude can do only a 4 to 7 G turn, but at 25 km of altitude only 3 4 G is the maximum. This clearly shows the impact of a less dense atmosphere on the lift force generation capability. No matter the higher speed, as ballistic missiles fly so high, above 30-40 km, it can only do correction maneuvers necessary for keeping the trajectory heading, nothing more, to make less serious the amount of terminal phase correction. This leads to the conclusion that performing a zigzag maneuver is not possible farther from the target, because ballistic missiles fly so high that generating huge lift force with a general ballistic missile shape is not possible. Even if it was, it would have no sense to do that, because as we can see later, the Patriot system has far less effective range than hundreds or hundreds of kilometers. Even if it was possible to generate the necessary lift for a high G turn, the energy requirement of the maneuver would be so huge that only 2 or 3 5 to 10 degrees zigzag turns would consume about 20-30% of the speed of the missile, so it would seriously affect its range. In terminal phase, a ballistic missile always flies in a denser atmosphere, where the interceptor missile is also capable of aerodynamic steering below an altitude of 25 km. In addition, the target flies essentially straight, except for a possible aerodynamic braking. The Kinzhal is the redesigned version of the land-based Iskander M ballistic missile. The main visible difference is the redesigned tail section where a streamlined cone protects the engine before the launch. The stabilizers are smaller than the Iskanders. The launch weight of the missile is 4800 kg, it is about 10500 pounds. The warhead is 480 kg, about 1050 pounds. About 6 to 10 MiG-23 airframes were converted to missile carriers, these planes lost their original fighter role. In the media, the Kinzhal is often referred to as a hypersonic missile, as if this designation contributes some kind of extra capability. While in reality, even the Iskander M has about Mach 6 burnout speed. In fact, some surface-to-air missiles also surpassed Mach 5 even during the Cold War why nobody labeled and promoted them as hypersonic SAMs. At that time, this speed label was not overrated and treated as some kind of miracle as today. The S-200 Vega, or as it called by the West, SA-5B Gammon also has such a missile. See the video about the SAM system on the channel. The Kinzhal is not an unimaginably wonder weapon just because of its speed. There were targets and missiles between speeds of Mach 5 and 10 long before. Moreover, despite how incredibly it may sound, there already was an anti-ballistic missile system 50 years ago, which could have shot down a target at this or even at higher speeds, but more on that another time. The Kinza likely inherited most of the features of the Iskander M. One of these, it can carry and dispense decoys to make the interception harder. This is an interesting and typical self-contradiction. Believers of the Russian wonder weapons are somehow not confused by the fact that if the Iskander or the Kinzhal flies so high and so fast that it cannot be intercepted, then why does it need decoys at all? Any weapon system carrying decoys is expected to be shot down. Otherwise, what would be the point carry unnecessary weight what limits the range of the missile? Just as the Iskander, the Kinzhal is able to perform aerodynamic braking. Being air launched provides some advantages compared to the land based Iskander M. First, thanks to the carrier airplane, the location of the launch and its direction towards the target are within wide limits, they can be changed very quickly. In the case of Ukraine, the B side can be launched from north from Belarus or east from Russia. Second, the MiG 31 can launch the missile with slow supersonic speed at 10 12 km altitude. Thanks to this, the burnout speed of the missile is higher compared to a zero speed, zero meter altitude launch. The first version of the Patriot SAM system entered service in 1982. The base variant did not have anti ballistic missile capability. However, the Patriot received many capability enhancements in the last 40 years. The PAC 1 version, introduced in 1988, was able to shop down ballistic targets up to Mach 4 speed but only if the missile battery itself was targeted. This type of target is called zero flyby distance target. 
Because of this limitation, the Patriot was still incapable of protecting anything nearby, this was only a self-defense feature against tactical ballistic missiles. The PAC-2 version entered service in 1990. Thanks to the new missile and software development, it became capable of protecting a small area in front of the missile battery. It was roughly a 90 degree wide cone up to 50 km distance. The maximum target speed was still only Mach 4. Following the end of the Cold War, the forecast of increasing threat of conventional ballistic missiles could not be ignored. This paved the way to the next major version to the Pack 3 The new major Patriot variant entered service in 2002. It received many new features. Besides the new ANMPQ-65 PESA radar, the most striking difference is a new but smaller missile, which is dedicated for anti-ballistic missile role. The missile has a much smaller diameter, so instead of one larger Pak-2 gun missile in a large canister, a similar size canister can store four smaller Pak-3 missiles. Mixed loadout is also possible when only one larger canister is replaced by a single Pak-3 canister. In this case, a single launcher has three Pak-2 gun type missiles and four smaller Pak-3 type. The maximum possible loadout for a single launcher is 16 Pak-3 missiles. The Pak-3 missile is fundamentally different from the previous Pak-2 missiles. It has active radar self-guidance instead of the track view missile method. Instead of a conventional warhead, it has a lethality enhancer, but mostly it destroys the target by collision. Due to the small size of the missile, the active radar operates at millimeter wavelength. The Pack 3 missile has gas dynamic steering besides the conventional steering method. This supports target interception with direct collision. According to US leaked documentation, Ukraine received Pack 3 and Gam T type missiles. Since there is no information about the delivery, more modern missiles with Discus Pack 3 here. Based on the Russian estimations, the Pack 3 missile is capable of intercepting a target with a maximum speed of Mach T's, which is about 3000 meters per second. One of the most important upgrades of the Pack 3 variant is that now it is possible to deploy the launchers farther from the radar and the engagement control station. The combined effect of these changes make it possible to increase the defended area in front of the radar and engagement control station up to 30 km distance up to a 30 km wide zone. Thanks to the dispersed launchers, now it is possible to defend a considerably larger area, roughly a city like Kyiv, from a single 90 degree wide direction. The scanning zone of the radar limits the zone. Although the Pack 3 missile has its own radar, the missile is guided to the terminal phase by the radar station and engagement control station with radio command guidance. Considering all the listed factors, it can be stated without doubt, wonder weapons do not exist. The Kinzai missile can be downed with the Patriot Pack 3, but the success is not guaranteed. The question is the probability of the kill. It has to be underlined with a single Patriot Pack 3 battery, only a single objective and its close vicinity can be defended. The question is what the Ukrainians plan to protect with the Patriot batteries and from what direction. From the attacker's point of view, it is essential to know the exact location of the Patriot batteries. The extent of the protected area and its efficiency is the result combination of these. It is very important to understand that the Kinzar is not a hypersonic missile with air breathing engine or a hypersonic glide vehicle. It is just an air launch ballistic missile with terminal phase maneuvering capability. These also overhyped things are a story for another time. If you like the video, you can share, like, subscribe or ring the bell and follow the channel. You can support it via Patreon for exchange for early access video, voting on planned topics and extra content is available and regular updates about the projects. So far 6 extra documents were released, their description is in the link under the video.